All right, welcome back guys. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler and today you saw the thumbnail. We've got our hands on the Axial SCX6. This thing, as everyone else has stated, absolutely massive, crazy big truck here. The links are just monsters. Awesome looking headlights, taillights, scale features all around. This thing looks like a real Jeep out here and it's definitely more convincing once you get the bigger scale like this. Looking forward to getting this thing out on the rocks. I know a bunch of people have done really detailed reviews on the exact specs and everything in this truck, so we're going to go out and show you guys what this thing can actually perform like if you put it on some challenging terrain. Let's see how this SDX6 performs. So one of my favorite features on most of Axial's releases with the Spectrum Smart technology and using a smart battery, I can tell exactly what my battery level is right here. So I know that I've got a full pack, we got a 5000 pack in here. Although these are fifth scale accessories, so we may be running through power a little quicker than we're used to on the tenth scale stuff. The second thing I want to mention here is just that this thing is so big, I was thinking about where to take this and what obstacles I know of that would be fun and challenging for it, but I've never driven anything like this, so I don't even have a reference for where to take this thing. So we're just going to kind of drive around and see if we can find some fun stuff to take it through. Although it is a lot easier to get close-up shots because it is the size that it is. Good amount of flex there. Four linked in the rear on coils, three linked with panhard in the front. Just like the SCX-10 3 little brother that this thing has. And that's one thing that's really surprised me is just how much it, like an SCX-10 3 this is, other than its scale. All right, we found a pretty steep climb here. I don't know whether this will or it won't. I don't really have any expectations that it should or shouldn't. I'm just kind of curious what it will do. Let's put this thing on some steep rocks. See if we can get it off its back bumper a little bit. Now, just for you guys' reference, I am in low range because I'm more of a slow finesse kind of crawler. We'll get it in second gear a little bit later. Oh yeah, plenty of traction. Let's see if we can swear up to that a little better. I know I was trying to keep the bumper off the rocks. A little bit of hop in there. Yeah, it just wants that hook to uh, pull itself up and around. Overall, not bad. This is a big, heavy truck, and to get it to go up something that steep is pretty good. Almost the exact same obstacle, basically just taking a different line here. Let's see if we can get it to come up this big ledge up here on its front passenger side. Got the front up, I'm a little concerned about it being able to drag its rear tire up. Oh man, didn't even slip a tire, drove right over it, no problem. So unlike the SCX-10 3 Little Brother that this has, this transmission in here is quite a bit different, both in aesthetics and function. Uh, as we all know, the SCX-10 3s both have a dig unit and a two-speed, and this only has a two-speed function that I'm aware of. Uh, I have not heard anything about a dig function in these transmissions so i would really like to see a dig function because i use the dig on my scx 10 3s a lot and it would really help maneuver a truck this size around i really like the weight of this thing it gives it a realistic little hop there as you're bouncing into stuff nice and steep got our front end hooked up now we're just double faced on some ledges a little bit Trying to keep this thing in frame, I'm just not used to this size of a truck. I gotta stand back a little further than I'm used to. We got a big old stick stuck in our suspension, that's kind of funny. Let's see if we can take a harder line through here. Drag that tire up a taller part of the ledge. Not a problem. Well, so far, so good. All right, we're gonna take this thing up a pretty narrow piece of this sandstone formation. It may end up forcing us into a bit of a side hill, which I'm curious how this will handle a side hill. I guess I should be prepared to catch a 25-pound rig here, plus two 5,000-pack batteries. So this thing's probably up around 27-pound range. Oh yeah, getting her stood up. She's looking good. Tires are conforming. Pulled it right up that second ledge. Now we're going to have to turn towards the edge here to try and get that tire up on the ledge rotating it's doing what I want it might just slide right along and then we're gonna turn into it yeah I will give it to axial on this this thing has excellent throttle feel 
It has a super low end on this thing with its censored spectrum brushless motor in here, which is a fifth scale motor. This thing is a big censored brushless motor. I really like this thing in first gear. It crawls awesome. This is the kind of feel that I like on my rigs. I like to go slow like this, put my tires exactly where I want and really just get an excellent feel for the ride. And this thing is absolutely providing that feel. So I'm a big fan of that. Like I say, we'll get it in second gear here in a minute. I'm still just trying to get an idea of obstacles that will actually challenge this thing. So far it's cruised over everything I've pointed it at, so I guess I need to try some harder obstacles. Now these trucks do have metal pinion gears as well as metal spur gears, so you're going to hear a lot more sound coming from the transmission, but you also get the added strength of metal gears, so can't really complain about that. Right here I'm just kind of testing the sensors motor's ability to come downhill nice and smooth and it doesn't just run away like a standard brushed motor would. So absolutely liking it so far. A little worried about this drop, seeing what's gonna happen. Servo has a lot of the weight on the vehicle, but I can still turn the tires. So, so far so good. Oh man, getting real sideways here. It's funny, you actually get a little more anxiety with a truck this size of rolling it because there's more consequence to it. Excellent, we're done. Let's bring it down another big steep obstacle. And so that's one of the points that I'm a little concerned with on these trucks is because they are so heavy, uh, taking a roll, you're a lot more likely to break something. So just beware of that. Might need to throttle out here in a second. I'd like to finesse it if I can wiggle the steering just to get it to fall off this ledge up front. Again, servo is strong enough to move under the weight of the truck pushed on the front axle. Tons of grip. I'm actually surprised. These tires are doing really good. Well, there we go. Woo! She pulled out. Nicely done, Rub Rubicon. Okay, let's see if we can get it to come up that obstacle that we just drove down. This is very steep and it's got some off-camber ledge stuff along the way. Got to pick our line carefully. I think we're going to get the hook and it should pull itself up. Wow! That's a big cool obstacle for this thing. Like if that were a real Jeep, that's a gnarly obstacle. So, so far I'm really liking this thing. This thing absolutely wheels for sure. Alright, we're in a sandy section. It's time to throw her in second gear. Oh yeah, this big girl moves now. So then let's throw it back in first. You can hear that servo actuate. There it goes, just clicked in. And then we're gonna work our way up some rocks. Got a nice little surprise for you guys at the top of this one. Keep cruising up. Try and catch that ledge on the driver's side. It's gonna help pull the passenger front up. Drive straight for a little bit, want to get that pass and the driver rear on that ledge and then bring it on around. Here she goes, just touching the sliders there. Absolutely perfect, that was it. And here we find ourselves in an awesome arch here. Luckily it's big enough for this thing, so that's a pretty good size arch out here. SCX6, short work of that obstacle. So I would say this obstacle out in Sand Hollow would be very realistic of what you might actually put your Jeep on. So you gotta stay balanced between both walls. Nothing too wild here, but you definitely gotta get your tire placement right. And here we are looking good. Got that sidewall on the front driver, really holding the Jeep against the other wall. Looking good. Got to turn into that passenger wall, try and keep that passenger rear up. The driver rear came over a little too far. We're going to lose the wall here in a second. Oh, these tires stuck it out. I am a fan of BFG tires, both real life and on the crawler side of things. So no surprise the tread pattern worked. All flexed out. Sweet, just like a real Jeep would have done. Well guys, overall, 
I'm very impressed with how this truck has been doing. Like it's climbing more than I thought it should have, especially with the weight of the vehicle. It just keeps crawling. Like it doesn't really care how heavy it is. It gets the traction, it has the suspension, and it just cruises on up these obstacles getting diffed out there. That is one thing I do want to mention is that they went with the straight axle on this SCX6 and I really like that. I don't I don't want portals on something like this. I think it's got enough diff clearance to be realistic. So I like that it's the straight axle just like the real Jeeps are. My only complaint is that it has a red diff cover. If it were my way, I'd make that silver or just black. But uh, of course you can take care of that if you get your own truck. And that's just me. Again, checking the descent control here. Let's see. The motor. Ouch. The motor was doing its job. It had the drag brake set very well, although the tire started to let go. Oh man. That was my first rollover with this thing, and that did not sound good. But uh, I'm sure it'll take it. We'll just keep on trucking. That wasn't all that bad, but man, this thing makes a ruckus when you let it, when you roll over. Well, guys, since we made it this far, let's talk a little more about the SCX6. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are as far as what the first upgrades you want to see are. Like, this is a brand new truck, and the market support is just getting fired up for this thing. I definitely expect to see quite a few different upgrades. Uh, I think I would probably like to see an overdrive option. Maybe just a ring gear, a ring and pinion for the front axle. I think that would really be awesome. And hopefully get pretty aggressive with it somewhere around 15% sounds awesome. Just because I know how much overdrive helps my other rigs, and I would definitely like to see an option out there for the SCX-6. Oh, we lost it. These rocks right here are super slick. This is making it really fun. Now I've driven my tent scale stuff through here before, but obviously totally different line choices. It does have some forward weight bias because that front end just sat down and it would have to have a forward weight bias to do that. I'm trying to get that passenger rear higher on the wall. That's it. That's where I needed to be really flexed out driver rear is nice and stuffed laying that front driver tire almost completely over you can hear that censored system chugging along because I just want slow wheel speed that rear tire just hanging on by the sidewall front tire setting back down that was awesome this was a cool technical climb And in these conditions, that was impressive. If you guys are a subscriber to my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of the Hobbywing Axe system. And the reason why is that FOC, it's called Field Oriented Control. Basically, as the wheels encounter more resistance, the motor automatically ramps up power to keep wheel speed consistent to your throttle input. This motor in this vehicle has that. It's a, it's a Spectrum brushless motor but it has the FOC built into it. So I really like seeing that and it makes this thing drive awesome. Super predictable. I think just a little bump here and I think we're gonna get it. Right there. Carrying that front tire. Don't wanna let up now. Try and just slow crawl it. I think we're a little too off camber at this point. Keep bringing it around. Woo! Trying to bounce it up this thing. <laughs> like it couldn't get any closer and not make it. That was it, there we go. Good job, Jeep. So I think if I were to own one of these, I would probably upgrade the steering servo. Not that this one doesn't work, like I showed you, you can put the weight of the vehicle towards the front and it'll still turn. 
but uh, it's always to ha it's always better to have too much than too little, especially when it comes to torque on your steering servo. And with a big heavy truck like this, depending on the upgrades you put on here, it might get heavier. So having a stronger servo is not going to hurt you. Well guys, we've done a big loop with this thing because this is a big truck, put it on some big obstacles, had a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. There's some second gear action for you. But uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. There's an affiliate link down below where you can pick this thing up. This is an awesome truck and I've really been impressed. Like genuinely, it's a fun truck. And it's surprisingly capable. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the content. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Until next time, keep the rubber side down. We will see you guys in the next one.